Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the newer Lego Minecraft sets from last year that's set number 21187 The Red Barn with 799 pieces this set retails for $99.99 USD or $100 and comes with a whopping eight characters which is almost unheard of for a Minecraft set I mean look at the Sky Tower it was what $70 and came with four this is double that which is insane i know it's only 30 dollars more but still this is a great value the figures are definitely mostly the reason why i bought this set let's take a look at them now the exclusive skin for this set is going to be the rancher and i love the design for this character it's also nice because we get some leg detailing while there's no printing they do have a different kind of like crotch design there which is nice normally we just get plain unprinted legs for minecraft characters the rancher design for the torso is pretty cool i love the silver shiny printing there along with the bandana design the character comes with a stone shovel and there's a little bit of back printing as well and then the head is a nice color great new hair color i don't believe we have that color in minecraft yet and there's a really nice slightly darker flesh tone face there um nothing too out of the box but i really do like that torso print i think it's very unique and definitely a nice inclusion this is the first time we've ever gotten a jungle villager in minecraft which is really great i love the design here and the color is really cool i think it's very interesting that they've done this character considering this is one of the mobs that can't naturally spawn. You have to create it. You have to either spawn it in with spawn eggs, commands, or breed a villager in a jungle biome. So it's really nice to get this variant, although it doesn't quite make sense because the barn is definitely not in the jungle. But hey, I'll take an exclusive character where I can get one. The farmer does have the brand new hat mold, which is pretty cool. I love when they include these because I can give them to my actual farmers, which is nice. The mob's head remains the same. No changes in the printing there. Really great design, nice short legs, and then no back printing, which is part of the course for villagers. This is technically two characters, but here we have the chicken jockey. Really great design. The chicken remains unchanged from previous uh, inclusions. However, unfortunately, the baby zombie is, is exclusive. Uh, and that means, by that I mean they took away the detail. The old version of the zombie, which I do actually have, had a little bit of printing at the top of the baby torso there, just like the adult zombies do. This one, as you can see when I pull the head off, it, it does not. That does mean you can use this body to make a really nice alive uh, if you want, but also it means that... This is a downgrade from the last time they had this figure, and there's no excuse for that. They really should have just kept the zombie the same, and I think it's really crappy that they did that. Even though this is a $100 set, and this is technically an exclusive mob, so I don't think we've gotten a chicken jockey before in this style, they really should have done something better with it. That being said, it is still really nice to get, and I love having more chickens because you can never have too many chickens. Just like the chicken, the cow remains unchanged from its appearance in the one of the very first Minecraft sets, I think, the farm. Uh, it's really great design. I love the facial printing and the texturing on the bottom, like the sides here looks great. Uh, don't really have too much to say. It's a cow. Uh, they also include a baby variant of the cow in the set, which is the exact same, just using lots of less pieces. And it's really nice to get a baby variant of this animal because I don't have one of these in my collection yet. So it's really cool to see it here. In addition to the cows, we also get a brand new horse variant here. I love the coloring on this guy. Some really great designs. Love the printing as well. The head does move up and down, but unlike previous variants of the horse like we saw in the stable set, this one does not have the rearing up play feature. These are just solid feet, which is totally okay. I wasn't a big fan of that play feature anyway. Kind of just want a normal horse, you know. The tail can be moved up and down. Other than that, there's no posability. And because this horse is the same color as the saddle, I can't tell if it's wearing one or not. When well, you can still place a minifigure on it, and it looks like that, which is pretty great and very accurate to Minecraft. The final character in the set is going to be the goat. This character only appears in three sets, one of them just released, so it's really cool to see it here again, especially because when this came out, now you have two of them, and you can have like a collection of goats, so now there's three. It's a really great design. I wish at some point they would maybe make a variant of the goat that doesn't have one of the horns because they do kind of pop off. It'd be really cool to have like a one horn goat, but I get that Leo's probably not going to make another new mold just to make a different variant of the goat because that is kind of expensive and unnecessary, but it'll be really cool to see. Who knows? Maybe I'll take like a file and try to get rid of one of those at some point. Uh, we'll see if I'm into that kind of customization. Great design. There is a hinge piece here and you can move the goat's head down so it can charge or up until it gets stopped by that piece right there. Other than that, very simple goat design, very accurate and really great to have. The Red Barn is honestly, surprisingly, one of my favorite Minecraft sets. I was not expecting to like this build as much as I did. In fact, until I saw someone else's review of it, I wasn't even going to purchase it, but they talked it up so much I was like, hey, 
maybe I should go check this out. And I am so glad I did. I think for $100, you definitely get a great value here. I mean, the size of the build is incredibly impressive. My only problem with it is it's not technically game accurate, as there's no real way to get this roof design in game with the number of studs showing, the heights and everything, which is a little unfortunate. But since when has Minecraft ever been game accurate? Like, there's always some problems, so I'm totally okay to overlook that. The exterior of the barn is rather nice. We have a very cool garden here with a, com a barrel or a composter. Something with a, I think this is supposed to be a barrel, with a carrot in it. We got some wheat and carrots growing here for the farmer to tend to. Some flowers on the exterior. I'm really glad they started doing three petals instead of just two. It looked so awkward, and I, I really like that change. We have some lanterns on the exterior just kind of hanging, one sitting on the fence. I like how they use birch. It's a really nice color, kind of contrasts with the red really well. There's a really cool play feature here where if you grab this uh, little knob and you turn it, boom! Plants grow. It's pretty cute, and that's accomplished by this whole thing being on Technic pieces, and you can, like, put it all the way back. Just twist that down, put it on top. You got some nice trans 2x2 blue tiles there, and just twist this. Boom! Potatoes grow. It's nothing, like, too fun, and I'm probably always going to leave it grown because... I don't really care about that play feature, and technically doesn't really make much sense because there's nothing... Oh, I dropped the flower. There's nothing planted there, and all of a sudden there's, like, planted stuff there. I don't know. It's a, it's a cute play feature, but not one that's really important to me. You can sort of see the interior here. There's a fence gate that leads into the rest of the barn, which is pretty nice. We'll look at that more in just a second. The rest of the exterior is relatively plain. There's nothing going on here. Some nice birch fencing. This side of the barn is open, so you can see inside to the stables. So I guess you could technically put a horse in there and have him, like, sticking his head out like that, which is pretty fun some nice stone wall designs other than that there's nothing left for the exterior so to open this you just really grab it and pull it's held together with only that one technic pen and now you get to see the full interior and let me tell you this is so cool we have a bunch of like random accessories strewn about there's a diamond axe in this barrel a bucket of milk an egg and then a chest up here the new flat top design with two apples in it Unfortunately, because it's flat top, you can't close the chest, and that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make for game looking accuracy. If you wanted to close it, you could always just take out an apple, and then you're fine. We have a lantern and a bed over here, nice to get the blue bed, along with some barrels of hay, which is always really good. You need those in a barn or a farm or anything. Now, this, that's not my fault. It might look like the wrong piece, and it is the wrong piece, but this is how my set came. Lego has been making more and more errors and issues lately. I just saw a video from um, Holly on Film about how Lego's been dropping the ball recently, and I can't agree more. I mean, this piece isn't supposed to be in the set at all. I looked in the manual, but they still gave it to me, and they didn't include one of those light tan ones. So I'm going to email uh, Lego customer service and be like, what gives? Even though I, I have one of these extra in my collection, I could really just replace it and it'd be no issue to me. But come on, Lego should be able to foresee issues like this or like, like how did this even happen? I, I don't know, it just really bothers me. All these open though, and you're able to put the animals inside. The set wants you to put the goat in there and then the horse in this stable. You can do whatever you want, um, but all the mobs do fit really well. And there's a ton of space. We also have a ladder on this wall, which is really nice because it actually provides a way for the figure to get to the second story. Something Lego hasn't always been too conscious about. Usually they just make a second story and you have to imagine it. But I like how for Minecraft, they kind of added that extra bit of realism. <laughs> realism from Minecraft. Uh, there's also a crafting table in the back corner because you cannot have a Minecraft build without one. Other than that, there's not too much else to the build. It's rather simplistic because it is a Minecraft set, but the simplicity is so nice. I don't think we've ever really gotten a solid red barn before. I mean, maybe like one or two in the city line. I don't really pay attention to that, but this is just such a great set, even outside of Minecraft, because you could totally like fix up the landscape a little bit and then populate this with normal minifigures. Like collectible minifigures could go in here pretty well, like Marvel, like anything. I could totally see Hawkeye, you know, living in here uh, and with his family and everything. So it's such a great build from that standard. It's also really solid. There's like not, none, no breakage. Uh, the only fragile part is this little fence, like farm that just completely detaches. But that also means if you don't want it in the front, you can move it and kind of put it anywhere else in the build. I think it kind of works really well over in that section. Um, fill out the grasslands and everything, which is nice. Aside from that, nothing too much else going on for the build. Definitely one of my favorites from this Minecraft wave. Really not expecting that, to be honest. The box for the set is absolutely massive with tons of different detail. I love the giant farm in the background there. I definitely prefer this box art as opposed to the new 2023 style. We have the chicken jockeys, the advertised mob in the corner. Everyone's out playing on the front of the box here. We have the set information. On the top of the box, you're going to have all the different characters included. Technically, there's only seven because the spider jockey or chicken jockey, excuse me, counts as one. But come on, it's a chicken and a zombie. I count that as two characters.
The back of the box is great as well, featuring a bunch of descriptions on how to use the play features, how to milk a cow, and then of course how to open the barn, and it gives you a really good look at the interior. A great box art, honestly shows you everything you need for the set, and honestly, looks pretty great too. The instruction manual for this set is pretty crap as usual, the render looks god awful, there's weird shadows and everything's like awfully smooth and discolored, but that's Lego for you. <laughs> Qu quantity over quality, right? And then here it's telling us they're going to be start using um, paper bags. This is bull. They said they were going to be completely paper by 2022 and it's 2023. And I have never seen a paper bag in my life, which is ridiculous. I mean, they did change the packaging for my advent calendar. I'll give them that. But aside from that, nothing much. Uh, the set uses the uh, farmhand, I think the rancher, as the little progress bar guy. On the back, we have the windman and then all the parts lists and everything. And then no advertisements, surprisingly enough. Something I'm not used to. Usually Minecraft has a bunch of advertisements, but come on now. You know they're cutting down on the quality of Lego manuals. So if it's not necessary, it's not included. Overall, this set gets a solid 10 out of 10 from me. For $100, despite the piece count only being 800, I think this is so worth it, especially considering most Minecraft sets do eventually go on sale. So if you can find this set in a couple months on sale, definitely pick it up. It's a great display piece, a great play piece. Uh, the play features are wonderful, and you get so many exclusive or rare characters in this set. I can't recommend it more. Make sure to leave your thoughts about this set in the comment section down below, and stay tuned. I just sent an order into Amazon for a ton of the new 2023 LEGO Minecraft sets, as well as some Marvel ones, so hopefully I'll have videos out on those very, very soon, as long as my package actually gets to my dorm, but we'll see about that. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic and safe rest of your day, and I'll catch you all in the very next video.